Hello everyone and welcome back to the Ciphering Weather. In today's video, Debbie is on its way out of the United States but still bringing significant impacts and we are tracking Disturbance 1 and its progress of potentially becoming a hurricane and if it's going to impact the United States or not. If you like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. So we're looking at the latest satellite image of the Atlantic Basin thanks to tropicaltippets.com for Friday, August 9th, 2024. The red arrow is pointing towards the remnants of Debbie as it moves into upstate New York and then eventually into Canada. And then the black arrow is pointing towards Disturbance 1 in the middle of the main development region. A very broad area of circulation that's going to take some time to consolidate, but is forecasted to potentially become our next tropical system. Here's the vorticity signature of our entities that we're tracking, as well as what, what one in the Eastern uh, Pacific that just crossed over uh, Central America from the Amer uh, Atlantic side. So that was originally on the models forecasted to go up into the potentially the Gulf of Mexico, but now it stayed very far to the south and, and went westward instead into the Pacific. So maybe a system will come out of it in there. But it's the bottom right that we're monitoring for development. Here's uh, the latest satellite image of remnants of Debbie as it races off now into upstate New York and eventually Canada. Compared to its very slow movement earlier this week, it is booking it out of here. And here is the simulated radar of all the rain that the Northeast could see over the next 24 hours. That long tail of thunderstorms could be producing tornadoes as it tries to sweep through the area later on tonight. Here's the latest satellite image of our Disturbance 1, the large cluster of thunderstorms that's going to take some time to consolidate because of that. We have a 0% chance over the next two days of seeing this develop, but over the next seven days, we are now up to a 60% chance of seeing this develop. So, and it's going to be heading towards the Caribbean islands, unfortunately. So let's use the GFS model to track where this storm could go, how strong it could get. So the black hexagon will be disturbance one. And this is the 850 cyclonic vorticity. So it's the spin and energy of the atmosphere about 5,000 feet up from the surface of the water. So here's our wind shear forecast showing the light blue in the westward direction of this path. So it's going to be favorable for development, which will protect it from the Saharan air layer just to its north and west, as you can see here. So now two days from now on Sunday, August 11th, it's still in the main development region, still moving underneath our big Bermuda Azores high in the smack in the middle of the Atlantic, as you can see here. Wind shear is still low, and it's working its way through that Saharan air layer, uh, so, but maintaining its moisture bubble, as you can see here. Two days after that, so four days from now on Tuesday, August 13th, potentially the system will be moving through the Lesser Antilly Islands at this point. So you can see them right here, that vorticity signature uh, going right through some of those islands. Could be a potential tropical storm or depression at this point with a 1,010 millibar low pressure system. And then one day after that, five days from now, it's going to be just to the south and west of Puerto Rico potentially in the eastern Gulf, Mexico. And you can see that vorticity signature is tight and starting to get a little bit more intense. So the pressure is down to 1,005 millibars at this point. And you can see this is the 200 millibar level now. This is where we have our upper level ridge starting to form from that cluster of thunderstorms. And we all know that decreases the wind shear, protecting it from this upper level trough that's just to its north and west. So it's going to protect its moisture bubble and allow it to get through that dry air with no significant problems. The only thing that's going to be hampering any development in this region would be crossing over Hispaniola because of those high mountains. Now, the question will be where this storm goes at this point. Will it continue moving 
in that uh, westward direction and go towards the Gulf of Mexico? Is it going to go towards the east coast of Florida or is it going to go out to sea? That is the big question at the moment. Some of that could be answered right now, as you can see here at the 500 millibar, the middle of the atmosphere. There's high pressure over the southeast United States. The Bermuda Azores High is being eroded away by an upper level trough. So that's creating that valley between the two high pressure systems for an easy out for this storm. Now it all depends on how strong the storm is to get to feel the effects of this trough to be pulled northward. If it's weaker, it could uh, go a little bit further to the west, as we'll see on this model run. If it's a lot stronger at this point, it could curve more out to sea a little bit faster. So because we don't have a very strong storm yet on this model run, it's moving through the Bahamas in more of a northwest direction, not a completely north direction. Now, you can see the vorticity signature does survive crossing Hispaniola. So with the upper level ridge still in place, decreasing that wind shear, protecting its moisture bubble, all that dry air is pretty much gone now. It's back to its, uh, to its east. And if we look at the mid-levels of the atmosphere at this point, you see that high pressure has backed off over the southeast United States as this upper level trough uh, continues to dig down across the eastern coast of the United States. And that's going to pull it northward, especially with an intensifying storm. Uh, because the taller the storm gets, the more it's going to feel these upper level winds. And by doing so, nine days from now, potentially, could be knocking on the door where Debbie made its second landfall in and around the Carolinas earlier this week, nine days from now. So we'll keep an eye on it. You can see it's a 976 millibar hurricane potentially. Now, just to show a comparison, let's switch over to the European model. And you can see that the European model makes this storm, instead of crossing over Hispaniola, it's a little bit stronger, crosses between Hispaniola and Puerto Rico. So it pretty much stays over water allowing it to be stronger and be a stronger storm, like I said, will feel the effects of that upper level trough more and pull north. So if you're in the United States, you want the, you want the Euro solution to be correct because this will keep it away from you. Unfortunately, it looks like the Caribbean islands will see some impacts, but it shouldn't be any hurricane, at least at this point. It's still going to take some time for that very large area of uh, circulation to consolidate into a low pressure system near the surface. Potentially, you can see the European model is saying a 985 millibar hurricane, obviously a little too close to comfort to Bermuda, but the United States on this model would be spared. Will it, this be the case? Don't know. This is nine days out. As you can see, it's very, a very big area of margin could be right near the coast of the Carolinas or it could be between Carolinas and Bermuda. So here's the ensemble models showing the spread out nature of where this storm can go over the next week and we'll keep it at that for now because the National Hurricane Center goes out a week. I've just shown you the two possibilities 90s out from now which is two days beyond this being close to the United States or closer to Bermuda. So that's the big margin of error that we're dealing with. So we'll continue to monitor disturbance one, the impacts it will bring to the Caribbean islands and potentially the southeast coast of the United States or even Bermuda. Hopefully it's just a fish storm and stays out to sea. As a reminder, we have super things available on deciphering weather. So if you'd like to donate to the channel, please go down to the heart button where it says thanks. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it please hit the like button and leave a comment please share this video with your family and friends on social media and if you new and like detailed with the breakdowns hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos thank you and have a great day